Hello everyone. When a patient presents with a sore throat, usually this is a sign of something sense limited, benign, easy to treat like viral pharyngitis or maybe strep throat, maybe infectious mononucleosis. So in other words, everyday boring stuff. And that's good. In medicine, boring is good. We like boring. However, from time to time, we are going to see patients with more serious conditions and then we have to be able to recognize them right away. And this is where the so-called red flags come in. So let's start with red flag number one. Your patients with sore throat will often have fever, even high fever, and they will feel miserable. That is to be expected. However, they should never be septic. By definition, of course, if the patient is septic, they are not doing very well, are they? So you have to look for signs of sepsis. How do you do that? Well, you observe your patient's overall appearance and you assess their vital signs. When the patient presents with any acute complaint, you assess their vital signs every single time. I always repeat that, I know, but it's worth repeating once again. So, of course, if these vital signs are significantly altered, you will realize that this person is sicker than you initially thought, right? If you want a more in-depth analysis on how to suspect and diagnose sepsis and other serious infections in general, I suggest you take a look at my free online course that I prepared for you. You will find the link in the description of this video. If you work with acutely ill patients, I strongly believe this will help you a lot in practice. But okay, back to our red flag. So sepsis is a red flag number one. I've seen patients with the so-called Lemire syndrome. So these were young, otherwise healthy patients who presented with sore throat, but it quickly progressed into sepsis. Lemire syndrome involves internal jugular vein thrombosis. So in addition to signs of sepsis, these patients present with unilateral neck pain and neck swelling around the affected internal jugular vein, right? And this brings me to the red flag number two, neck swelling and neck pain. If you see that, you will know that this is not your simple uncomplicated pharyngitis, of course. Now, when I talk about neck swelling, I don't mean these swollen lymph nodes right about here. This is normal. This is something that you're going to see all the time in strep throat, in infectious mononucleosis. I'm talking about unilateral painful neck swelling like the one you find in Lemire syndrome, right? Patients with subacute thyroiditis can have a swollen and painful thyroid. Patients with neck abscesses can present with painful neck swelling. Patients with Ludwig's angina, so this is the inflammation of the floor of the mouth right here, they will present with a, with a huge bulge, with the swelling in this area. So neck swelling definitely is a red flag and you should never ignore it. Red flag number three. Patients with acute pharyngitis will often complain of pain when swallowing solid foods. They will often be a little bit dehydrated due to poor oral intake. And that is something that you are going to see all the time. However, if the patient's pain is so severe that they cannot even swallow saliva or liquids so that they are actually drooling, this is not normal. You should suspect a complication. Many patients with such severe pain will also have trismus, which means they won't be able to open their mouth all the way. So this drooling and trismus often accompanied with the so-called hot potato muffled voice like this, right? This is a red flag and you should start looking for complications. The most common complication that you will find will be peritonsillar abscess. And fortunately, this is the one that is the easiest to diagnose and to treat. You take a look at the pharynx and you will see this marked asymmetry between the left and the right. So you will, you will see this huge bulge on one side of the pharynx. That is the peritonsillar abscess. It has to be evacuated. And typically, the minute it is evacuated, your patient's level of pain will automatically go down. Your patients will feel a lot better. When you see something like this, you have your diagnosis. You know it's a peritonsillar abscess. But if the patient presents with very severe pain, so they cannot swallow liquids, they cannot even swallow saliva, but you take a look at the pharynx and you cannot see anything there, or it's just a little bit red, or you imagine that it's kind of red because you're expecting to find something, this is a red flag. This pain that is out of proportion with other physical findings. In that case, you have to think about two possibilities. Number one, it's not actually the pharynx that is the main problem, it's something else. And two, 
the infection is actually very deep seated. The reason why you can, why you cannot see anything of the surface of the pharynx is because the deep structures of the neck are affected. In that case, you will need imaging. You will be looking for conditions like the retropharyngeal or parapharyngeal abscess. So once again, the deep structures of the neck are actually affected. But let's go back to this first possibility. It's not actually the pharynx. Remember, the throat is a very imprecise word. The throat involves the pharynx, the larynx, the thyroid, and everything around that. When, when people say, I got a sore throat, ask them, where exactly is the pain? Of course, some patients won't be able to pinpoint exactly where, where it hurts, but you should always be aware that the pharynx is not the only part of the throat, that the throat is a not very precise word. So if it's not the pharynx, what else could it be? It could be epiglottitis. Fortunately, today epiglottitis is not a very common condition uh, with modern vaccination programs, but from time to time, if you're unlucky enough, you will see patients with epiglottitis. It could be subacute thyroiditis. It could be Ludwig's angina. I already mentioned it, right? So be careful. If you take a look at the throat and you cannot see anything there, don't imagine redness. Don't imagine that you are seeing something. Stop and think. Maybe it's not the pharynx that is the main problem. So this is definitely a red flag. Pain that is out of proportion with other physical findings. And finally, what all these conditions have in common, abscesses, epiglottitis, Ludwig's angina, they can all compromise the airway. And this leads me to the final set of red flags. If your patient with sore throat has any signs of dyspnea, this is the reddest of red flags. If they have any kind of trouble breathing, if they assume certain positions that make it easier for them to breathe, like the so-called tripod position like this, where they activate the, their accessory muscles because they need extra power to overcome some kind of obstruction, or if they assume the so-called sniffing position like this, this means that they are trying to open up their airway and get enough air into the trachea. This is actually the position that we use when we intubate patients. If you see any of that, first, don't panic, but don't let this person out of your sight. If a patient with sore throat presents with any signs of respiratory failure, dyspnea, accessory muscle activation, any of that sniffing position, you have to be prepared for the worst. You have to be prepared for advanced airway management. So call the most experienced physician that you have right away and be prepared for everything. Be prepared for advanced airway management. These patients could stop breathing within minutes. Hopefully this won't happen, but if it does, you need to be prepared. Thank you for watching. Good luck out there and take care.